Jim Graham here for Beyond the Cage, presented by Fight Chicks on the line. Joining me is a special guest. He will be fighting on RFA 19 on the 10th of October against Junior Moranjo. He is Mr. Marvin Blummer. Marvin, thanks for coming on Beyond the Cage. Oh, thanks for having me, Jim. It's a pleasure. Now, of course, uh, summer's coming to a close here in 2014. It's officially fall, but how was your summer, Marvin? Oh, it was great. It was great. Uh, you know, uh, I had a pretty relaxing summer. Um, uh, just enjoyed a lot of family time and uh, putting some work in. So it is. Now, did you go on vacation or do anything special? Yeah, me and my uh, family we went up. We went up north. Went on a couple camping trips and uh, you know did some fishing and you know had some good quality family time. But uh, I didn't uh, travel anywhere too exotic. Now, when you're not doing MMA or doing any type of training or working out. What do you like to do for fun? Um, pretty much, um, I do MMA for fun for the most part, but, uh, otherwise, uh, hang out with my family. Uh, me and my wife like playing a lot of volleyball, so, uh, beach volleyball and, uh, other than that, fishing with my sons and, you know, riding bike and doing all that fun stuff. Now, being in Minnesota, obviously get pretty cold winters there. Have you done like ice volleyball? Has that ever happened? Uh, that is nothing. That is something that we have not tried yet. But now that you mention it, maybe that's something I'll have to keep in mind because uh, my wife is a pretty diehard volleyball player, so I it wouldn't put me past her. So, now was there any martial art or uh, wrestling or anything you got into before you did MMA? Um, uh, really, I just uh, you know basically I played hockey uh, in high school and throughout my you know my childhood. I played hockey a lot, you know, in the I was a defensive man, so I, you know, I got my fair share of scrapping, uh, there. But other than hockey, you pretty much just wrestling with my brothers and, uh, you know, I have an identical twin brother. So me and him and my older brother, uh, got our fair share of wrestling matches. But uh, other than hockey, it's just, just that. So what was it that got you into mixed martial arts? Um, pretty much when I seen UFC one, uh, you know, I just something I always, that was just interesting, you know, and just how it was one person versus another. And, you know, back then, obviously, it was style versus style. And uh, martial arts was something that always just intrigued me. So uh, it's just after I seen that first UFC, I was just kind of hooked and watched it a lot. But, you know, back uh, back then, I was still a young pup. So, uh, you know, I you know, kept telling myself, you know, one day I'm really going to give that a try. And, uh, you know, uh, many years later, you know, uh, that opportunity kind of arose and, my brother, buddy and one of my friends started training at an MMA gym, and, you know, from there, I was just hooked. Now, you mentioned, you know, watching UFC 1 and a lot of the other original UFC events, but, you know, uh, besides some of those guys, the original guys, are there any other guys, you know, maybe more recently that you look up to uh, as a fighter? Um, You know, uh, I'm a, a lighter weight guy myself, so I don't want to be biased, but i um, you know, I'm a big uh, Jose Alba fan. You know, uh, you know, you're I a favor. Uh, you know, I, um, Dominic Cruz, just the footwork, the way they move. You know, uh, I'd have to say that them are probably some of my favorites. But Anderson Silva is obviously I'm a huge fan just because I'm a striker first and foremost. You know, I like to stand and trade. So just watching any Anderson Silva fight, the way he moves his head and he can, you know, see the punches coming and he's not – just throwing to throw is actually reacting off of what his opponent's giving him. And, you know, so I remember some of the, some of the people I really enjoy to watch. Now we're about a week or two from your fight on the 10th, but are you doing anything special to keep your weight on track uh, for weigh-ins on the 9th of October? Um, yeah, you know, I'm just uh, sticking to my diet. You know, I try to start, start pretty far out. You know, I got a pretty good system that is, uh, you know, I think I've been the, you know, made the cut to bantamweight. You know, I think um, ten times or so, and uh, I think I got a pretty good system bound. But uh, no, I'm just trying to keep my strength and conditioning up. You know, and just to kind of get ready for this last little push through. You know, get these, you know, last you know ten or so pounds off. So now you have over uh, ten fights professionally. And this will be the first time, however, you will be fighting for the RFA. And what does it mean to you to be fighting for an organization like the RFA? Oh, 
I mean, it's, uh, it's exciting, you know. I mean, when, when I, uh, got the call and got the offer to fight, uh, you know, I basically jumped right at it, you know. I mean, when you get a chance to fight somebody like, R- for somebody like RFA, I mean, you usually jump on that chance, you know. And then seeing that I got an, uh, another opponent that's, you know, well versed as well is just, uh, just a huge opportunity, you know. I mean, it's just, uh, some, uh, you know, I'm hoping I can, get a chance to show everybody what I can do. So now I'm going to get a chance to fire for I want to really go out there and show everybody what I can do. Jim Graham for Beyond the Cage presented by Fight Chicks on the line with Marvin Blummer fighting at RFA 19 on October 10th. And sticking with the RFA theme here, as I mentioned, it will be your debut for the organization. And it has to be nice that not only do you get to fight for the RFA, but it's in your home state of Minnesota. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh that's what I you know I if I if somebody was gonna say I was gonna fight for RFA I definitely wouldn't have thought of it near my near my backyard for the most part. Uh you know, most um bigger fights you gotta kinda do the traveling so uh it's just uh awesome. You know, I couldn't be more excited, you know, and then to you know, be here in the uh you know, when I'm usually fighting these bigger fights are usually uh out of town so I don't have my home fans there. So I have my home fans there, I think it's just gonna be uh an explosive night. So, now with your fight being with the RFA, of course, it's going to be shown nationwide on Access TV. And does that give you any sort of extra motivation to put on a good performance? Oh, for sure. You know, anytime that you know that you're going to have a chance to play live in front of an audience you know, all over the world, I mean, you really want to kind of bring that little bit extra. You know, I mean, I always try to train as hard as I can. You know, for every fight. But, you know, there's always that little knowing that it's going to be, you know, sort of a, a live audience, you know, it kind of gives you a little extra edge to push that little extra more. Now, your opponent at RFA 19 is Junior Moranjo, who in his last fight, it was at Flyway, uh, it was a loss to Matt Manzanares, and the kind of famous or infamous clip of him was in between the fourth and fifth round, he fell off his stool and was still allowed to continue and come out for the fifth round. And I don't know if you had seen that clip when it happened or if you've seen it uh, since, kind of like on demand or in the gift form on the computer. But when you look at something like that, uh, Marvin, does that kind of was that kind of shocking to you that they even let him come out for the fifth round? Oh, for sure, you know, because I'm also a, I'm also a coach and a gym owner as well. So I mean, to, to see somebody after you know. Uh, you know what it looked like to pass out between rounds to be you know sent back out to get and continue fighting is you know just mind boggling to me uh you know uh, off the top of my head you know I can't you know it's pretty surprising that somebody wouldn't think that you know there could be something more wrong, but to see that he you know then to see him continue and then see him to end up uh, and finish the fight and losing a split decision i mean that's just, you know, and I was just like, wow, well, this guy's definitely going to, you know, definitely a tough guy if he's going to you know, have something like that happen and then still get enough composure to pull it back together for that last round. So uh, it was definitely something I didn't think I'd see in my lifetime anyways. Now, with Moranjo fighting some at flyweight, obviously he'll be fighting you at 135 for this one. Do you feel like you might be a little bigger than him when you step into the cage? Uh, I do feel that, uh, you know, um, I think already I'm pretty big for uh, the Bantamweights, uh, for most everybody I've fought. And, uh, you know, I know he's very tall, especially for our, especially for a Bantamweight, much less a flyweight, you know, so I feel like in the strength aspect, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be a little bit stronger than he is, but, you know, I never really read a book by its cover either, and he does have that long reach, but. I'm assuming this, you know, hopefully push for push that uh, I'll have a little bit more as far as that goes. Now, when you take him on on the 10th of October, what will you have to do to be successful against him? Um, I think the biggest thing is to implement my game plan. You know, uh, I'm a you know a pretty aggressive fighter, you know, but I have to be able to fight aggressive and be smart, too. So I think the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, making sure I keep the fight where I want it to be. And, uh, you know, um, I would like to say play it safe, but that's not the way I fight. So, um, so I, you know, I just want to take the fight to him. That's what I love to do to people. And, uh, so I think to be successful, I'm going to take the fight to him and make sure he's the one guessing. 
All right, Marvin, I'll get you out of here with this uh, RFA 19. Of course, you probably know a lot of the guys uh, from your home state of Minnesota fighting on this card. So uh, what are some other fights you're looking forward to on that night? Um, well, first and foremost, the one I'm looking forward to is um, one of my teammates, uh, Jake O'Radnick, is fighting a good fight against another good guy from the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, uh, uh, Mike Zimmer. So I'm really excited for that fight. This is uh, you know, a really good opportunity for somebody I've trained with for you know a lot of years. Uh, they're kind of making that next step to the you know the RFA level type of fight. Yeah. He's, so I'm really excited for that one. So the Jake Radnick Mike Zimmer fight plus, I think they're very, very evenly matched. I think it's really, really going to be a, a good back and forth fight that, uh, you know, could go either way. But, uh, obviously, you know, I like Mike, but I, I hope my buddy, uh, Jake gets his hand raised at the end of that one and goes what he's trained to do. Otherwise, uh, the Carl Deaton fight, I think, uh, even with, I've seen some of the changes that have been made, I still think it's going to be, uh, a very good fight. You know, I know, uh, I know Carl pretty well, um, and uh, I just every time I see him, he's just constantly getting better. You know, just keep changing his game game up and keep improving in areas. And so I think that's going to be a really good one. And uh, the John Casada um, Matt Brown rematch, I think it's a, a, a going to be a very good fight as well. You know, you know them a uh, rubber match or them um, you know uh, rematches. You know, are always usually pretty intense. So I think that's going to be a really good fight to watch. He is Mr. Marvin Blummer. He will be fighting at RFA 19 against Junior Moranjo. You can follow him on Twitter at MarvinBlummer82. And Marvin, thanks for coming on Beyond the Cage. Appreciate the time and look forward to your fight on the 10th of October. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. And uh, yep, can't wait to uh, uh, hopefully get a chance to tell you about uh, the big win. Once again, that was Marvin Blummer right here on Beyond the Cage presented by Fight Chicks.